question here from Ernie, uh, Ernie around uh, regarding rising interest rates, and there is a, a mortgage cliff, you know, a rollover of the peak in fixed rates in May till now. Okay, so I just want to put things in perspective for everybody. Okay, so what we're looking at here is the property index. So the pink line is, I guess, property values, an average property value, so to speak, or an index of property values. Um, what is this? Is it just... Melbourne and Sydney, so just Melbourne and Sydney, uh, from 1960 through to today. And we also have the black line, the dark line here is interest rate, so the average mortgage rate. So you can obviously see here from the period, you know, 1960s through to 1990s, so 30 years, we had interest rates going from around 6% all the way up to 16%. You know, this is at a time when, I, you know, my dad would have lost our family home if he hadn't had a loan that was at a fixed interest rate for the lifetime of the loan, something that you don't see these days. Um, that saved him, I guess. But in this, you know, this is an example of a 30-year prolonged period of interest rate rises, and then there was an RBA around the same time, I think it was in the mid-1990s that the RBA changed policy to keep in inflation in between a range of 2 to 3 percent. Okay, I'm not sure if that's a coincidence, just, you know, it's counterintuitive counter that in interest rates decrease and uh, in um, inflation also decreases or is held at that 2 to 3 percent range. But this is also a, a time around, what was it, the recession that we had to have. Um, you know, there was a migration policy change through here as well where we have a lot of focus on migration, which adds to, I guess, net output for the, for the country. But, you know, this is a very sustained period of uh, interest rate rises. They might go up, they might go down, but overall they're going up. Now, the really important takeaway from this chart is the gap or the difference between the doubling of values. So every one of these diamonds on this line is a doubling of values. Okay, you've gone from 11 and then you've had a decade for them to go to 23. You've gone from 23 to 46 in about five years, six years. You've gone from 46 to 91 in about eight years. Uh, then you've gone up again here in, in about you know six years. And then you've had maybe about a 12 year period here until the double and then a six or seven year period again here. Now, what is the takeaway? What was my first response or thought when I saw this chart? And I'd love to hear from your responses in the chat, guys. Um, you know, jump in the comments to talk about this because I think it's really important. For me, there is a very strong, and this is 60 years worth of property data. For me, there is a very strong correlation between higher capital growth percentages, you know, a shorter time between the prices doubling when interest rates are rising compared to when they are falling, okay? And even in this period, this period is shorter than this period, interest rates were rising in that period. You know, so this represents a, you know, very high inflationary period, uh, uh, I guess an inflationary um, period, right? Higher inflation, higher interest rates, an inflationary period. Property is not removed from this conversation. Interest rate rises are not our enemy. If we are playing the long game, we can afford to hold our properties. This is the time when your assets appreciate in value. So you've got to reframe this, guys, right? You've got to reframe this because when you look at things in this way, higher interest rates or more importantly, increasing interest rates are our friend as property investors because they are generally associated with higher capital growth percentages. You know, you think of maybe the reasons why this might occur. You've got rental increases, okay? Um, you've got investors trying to cover the cost of higher interest rates and that's been passed on to the investors. You've got low new supply, you know, larger, higher building costs, less people can afford to do renos. Um, tradies can't get materials like they can at the moment. All right, so that's all trickling down into lack of supply, lack of new homes being built, and lack of the easing of the pressure in the rental space. So rent, rent, asking rents is going through the roof. And asset values always end up evening out uh, to the income derived from that asset. Okay, over time, it's not a perfect science, but over time, if the incomes associated with assets increase, the asset value will increase. Okay, and they're usually quite closely correlated. So I feel like, you know, you've got inflationary pressures across the board, across the country, that's moving it, and you know, rents are not 
uh, separated from that pressure and that's translated over into asset values. You have inflationary pressure applied to property values and price. Okay, so I just wanted to probably make that, uh, that call, right? Make that observation where interest rate rises are not our enemy. They are probably our friend as property investors. All right, so this is an environment where if we can hold an asset, let's jump in. This is where fortunes are potentially made, right? As the dollar is devaluing, okay, as the, you know, our interest, the repayments on our loans is devaluing, okay, the actual principal amount of our loans is devaluing, which is an awesome thing, and we're having our assets appreciating in value. This is potentially a time when you are leveraged and you have assets in your portfolio when you generate you know, intergenerational type equity positions. So we have to understand that, that these types of inflationary periods are what we really want to be holding on to as investors. Um, look at what's happened. You know, you'd have to assume through these periods that there were fixed rate uh, cliffs, you know, there were recessions, there were global financial crises, there were all of these GFC types events, you know, September 11, all of these crazy things that were coming through and people were thinking, oh God, what's going to happen to property prices? Well, through all of this, they went up faster. So for me, there's no, there's no release valve. Okay, there's no scope for new homes to be constructed. The governments are going to try to put handbrakes on tenancy increases, rental increases, but guess what? There's no, there's no law to force you to keep the tenant in the property. Okay, for me, I'm going to shorten the leases as much as possible. And if I can't legislative wise increase rents into market rents, I'll turf the tenant out and I'll put another one in there at market rent. Okay, so there's always ways around this as landlords. Um, it's very hard to legislate to, to prevent that occurring. Rents will continue to go up. You know, that's my call. So for me, I do not see distressed sales. Okay, I do not see for certain affordable, middle of the market properties, I do not see distressed sales. Okay, you've got a huge amount of pressure on wage growth to match inflation. You've got record low unemployment. You know, is there distress at mortgage rates now? Are we seeing mass sales occurring? People can, you know, move back in with the parents and rent it out at record rents as a worst case scenario and not sell. Okay, so there are exit plans. And if we are dealing with very affordable type properties, okay, um, you know, under 800,000 is what I would deem affordable, then we're probably insulated from a lot of that risk associated with, you know, million dollar plus mortgages uh, and that distress associated with having to sell the asset. Okay, you know, just remember, if someone is paying 7% interest rates, but they can get 6% or 5.5% yield for the property, they might consider leasing it out, right? And then, as I mentioned, going and moving back in with family or doing something like that in the short term for six months just to keep the property and avoid having to sell it. If you've got a $1.5 million property that would only get you a 2% yield, that's not really an option. 2% in terms of rental income, moving back into parents or doing something else, moving into another property, a smaller property. Um, it's not really an option because you're only going to get 2% rental yield for that property. So remember for the mass market of Australia, selling an, a property or a principal place of residence, it's a big step. It's something that they will avoid, all right? Um, and you know, with that type of, I call it lipstick type property, it's very affordable, um, is a lot of back, the backlog of demand and, and, you know, I guess an insulation from the distress of the sale, right? All right, guys, if you're loving this content, you want to join in the conversation, then head across to our High Performance Property Investment Facebook group. Over there, we digest these videos, we pick them apart, and we also talk about alternative scenarios. So jump over there, apply to join, and we'd really love to welcome you to that community.